Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the new Google Play edition of the Sony Z Ultra. Notice they removed Xperia from this name because this is running stock Android. So Google kind of quietly launched this along with a Google Play edition of the LG G Pad 8.3. So this now joins the GS4 as well as the HTC One in the Google Play Store in these Google Play editions. Basically, these are versions of these devices running stock Android and therefore are more uh, are updated more quickly than their uh, uh, OEM counterparts. So, you, of course, you can still buy the Xperia Z Ultra with all the Sony software, but if you want the stock experience with an unlocked bootloader that gets the latest version of Android, this is definitely something to take a look at because you get the same hardware, you just get the software that some of you may prefer. Now, like all Google Play Edition devices, these are sold off contract, so you do pay full price for them. So this is $649, this is $599, this is also $649. So fairly hefty prices, but of course, they are unlocked and you're paying nothing on contract, so you can select your carrier. Of course, you do have to have a carrier that supports these devices, and that usually excludes Verizon in the U.S. Now, the Z Ultra is one of the largest smartphones on the market right now with a 6.4-inch 1080p display. This is that Sony Triluminous display. LCD. Uh, we also have a 2.2 gigahertz Snapdragon 800 processor, 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of internal storage, and 8 megapixel rear firing camera with a waterproof design. All right, so let's go ahead and crack this open and take a look. All right, so we're just going to cut these little tabs here. All right, just peel it apart here. And there it is, our very large black phone. This is only available in black. The Xperia version is sold in white or purple. All right, so let's just lift it out. Yes, it's very, very large. Uh, kind of nice. It does fit my very large hands, but it is definitely large for a phone. Now, some people call these phablets. I kind of, I'm a little reluctant to call anything less than 7 inches a phablet. To me, this is still a, just a large phone. All right, let's set that aside, take a look at the contents. I don't think there's much in here. All right, so we have our startup guide. Just shows us some of the ports and buttons, as well as the flaps that house the micro SD card slot, as well as your SIM tray. This has a micro SIM, not a nano SIM. We're going to explore, of course, all of that when we look at the device. Uh, important information, nothing interesting there, and in different languages. U.S. safety guidelines, SAR information, and that's about it. We also have our hardware accessories, so we do have a micro USB cable for charging and syncing your device. Uh, we also have a wall wart. So we have Sony's branded wall wart. You can see it's kind of a nice design. It's got plastic surrounding it. Let's go ahead and peel it off. So there we go. Glossy Sony wall wart with that matte finish along the side. One USB connector. All right, so let's get back to the phone in its plastic envelope. We're just going to pull this out. All right, so we have lots of plastic covering our device. So we have one big one covering that huge black slab on the front. Now the plastic wrap on the back points us to some of the hidden ports which are hidden behind flaps including the micro USB port for charging it. It recommends a 30 minute charge before use I suppose. We also have our flap covering the micro SD card slot as well as the SIM tray. Alright, so let's go ahead and peel this off. And there we go, we have basically what looks like one piece of glass. The first thing that jumps out to me with this phone is just how thin and lightweight it is. It makes this very large phone a lot more manageable than I was imagining. So it definitely feels pretty nice in the hand, but of course it is very large. So for example, if I'm holding it comfortably, you can see that my fingers barely wrap around the front of the device. So of course when you're handling it, you either have to use two hands or if you're one-handing it, you kind of have to have a very light grip on it. So it makes it a little precarious to handle. Now taking a close look at the design of the Z Ultra with that edge-to-edge -edge front glass panel toward the bottom, you actually see the mouthpiece which is nicely integrated into the bezel. Now the bezel itself here is plastic as opposed to the glass or uh, clear plastic as we've seen with other uh, Ultra products or yeah, the Xperia products. We also have our speaker down here which is flanked on the corner here with a lanyard port so you can connect a lanyard if you'd like. Uh, along the other side we'll find our accessory port for connecting Sony accessories such as the charging docks, that sort of thing. Those are proprietary of course. We also have a door up here hiding the micro USB charging port. So if you look inside you'll see this little rubber gasket that seals up the micro USB port which keeps it watertight and dust resistant. Along the top you'll find your earpiece which mirrors the mouthpiece at the bottom. You can see our Sony branding with our 2 megapixel front firing camera. That's good for 1080p resolution at 30 frames per second. And if you look really closely uh, to the left of that, you get that little shadow indicating the presence of your ambient light sensor. Now along the top you'll find one of the microphones which also picks up on the design of the speaker on the bottom of the phone.
Now the right hand side of the device has a lot more going on. So for example, you have your power on and off button. You can see it's mounted toward the middle of the right side, which is the more comfortable position. You also have your volume rocker, which is mounted just below that. I really like Sony's uh, power on and off button. It feels really tactile. Uh, you can also feel it pretty easily. You also have that door for your micro SD card slot, as well as your SIM. And just above that is the headphone jack, which is also water resistant, even though it's open. So we can go ahead and pop this off, and there behind it is the micro SIM tray as well as the uh, SD card slot. Now along the back you'll just find this one piece of glass with our Sony branding NFC technology. So you can see this is the area where you'll find the NFC. You also have a camera with 8 megapixel autofocusing and 1080p resolution at 30 frames per second. But what you're missing here is an LED flash. This does not come with one, which was a bit of a surprise to me. At first I thought it was might be hidden behind the glass, but indeed it does not have an LED flash. That's kind of strange to me because even tablets have LED flashes. I guess this one chooses to go without because photos are usually best without them anyway. All right, so I'm just gonna power this on for the first time. So again, we have a full 1080p screen over 6.4 inches that gets us a pixel density of 334. So that's not as pixel rich as something like the uh, 1080p display on a 4.7 inch screen or a 5 inch screen, which usually put it over 400. All right, so I've logged into my Google account and we're all set. So this is gonna be the stock experience for you. This is what you would get when you first activate your device. Now the launcher is different than the Nexus 5. Nexus 5 has a unique launcher which is not carried over to the other Nexus devices or to the Google Play devices. So for example, we can't swipe all the way over to get to the um, uh, Google Now feature. You do have to swipe up here from the home button to get to it. Now the great thing with the Sony Xperia Z, unlike the uh, uh, HTC One or the GS4 is that we do have on-screen Android controls, which mean they operate the same as any of the Nexus devices. So again, you can swipe up to get to Google Now, tap the home button to get back home. You have your recent apps, which allows you to cycle through them, and of course you do not have Close All, which tends to be a feature that uh, skins add. Uh, but you can quickly launch an app just like that, or you can swipe them out of the way to close them. We also have the back button, which works the same, and that's about all. So you can't tap and hold on any of these buttons for other features except for Google now. Now the Nexus 5 has a few other exclusive features such as the ability to say okay Google to wake up Google now and speak to it. It also has uh, transparency uh, surrounding these uh, Android controls as opposed to the black bar. You also have a different home screen editor. So when you tap and hold the home screen here you get the traditional editor while you get a full editor on the Nexus 5. Now they have enabled landscape orientation with this device which is unique. This is kind of similar to the Nexus 7 in many ways uh, unlike the other phones. So the Nexus 5, the GS4, and the HTC One Play Edition do not do this, only this phone. Now from the lock screen, you can swipe up to get to Google Now, again, a familiar experience to any Nexus device. We also have the camera, which you can quickly toggle through by either swiping to the right, you also have your little icon here, which allows you to swipe to the right. Now we have the standard array of Google Apps in the app drawer. The only thing I've added here is Geekbench 3, so we have Hangouts, which is now our messaging app. So in fact, if you go to the home screen, you'll see that Hangouts is now integrated as your standard app, which now integrates SMS, that's all of Android 4.4 feature. We have Google Keep, Maps, News and Weather, the People app, the new phone dialer. So if you go to the phone dialer, you can see just how big the phone dialer is. It's not scaled in any way for the size of the phone. It's just basically blown up here. Uh, you also have Photos, which replaces Gallery, as well as Google Plus Photos. It's just one app now that integrates everything. Uh, we also have Google Plays, or the new, new Play Newsstand, which integrates all of your uh, Google Play magazine content. We also have Quick Office, so we have a full Office suite for editing and viewing uh, Word documents, Excel, and PowerPoint. And also you can see our new settings icon, again, all 4.4 stuff. We have YouTube, we have Google Wallet, and we do have NFC, so we do have that feature here, and we have Voice Search. So again, pretty standard stuff. Now, while this is mostly a stock device, there are a few features which Sony has added. So if we go to settings, we'll find two of them. So if we go to sound, we'll find sound effects. So under sound effects, we have clear audio plus, which you can toggle on. Basically, that automatically optimizes sound settings for listening to music. We also have dynamic normalizer, which minimizes volume differences between songs or video. We also have the sound enhancement panel. So we have our equalizer, which we can adjust manually. You can also change your bass here. Uh, we also have settings, so we have even more controls here for clear stereo, clear phase, and X loud. So lots of Sony controls here. Of course, that is their important feature set. Now for the most part, we pretty much have the same control panel that any Nexus device has. So if we go to About Phone, we'll find our Android version, Android 4.4. So you can see our little Easter egg. So if you tap and hold on that, 
We get Android KitKat. Now going back to our lock screen, again, fairly stock, so we have our drop down shade, so we can get to our notifications or jump to our settings or quick toggles. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, Android, you can also do, you can get access to your settings or quick toggles by using a two finger gesture to swipe down as opposed to a single gesture. Now it's not like a tablet, so for example, uh, you can't swipe down on the right to get to your quick settings toggles like you can with larger devices. Now the Z Ultra has a really nice display. The first thing I noticed when I was using it was just how bright and vivid the colors are. The Nexus 5 can be accused of being a little washed out, but I really like the display. Uh, the Nexus 7 tends to be really bright and blue. It's a really nice display as well. It tends to be a little cleaner looking, but the colors aren't as vivid. The Z Ultra has really bright, vivid colors. So it's got a much higher color gamut than something like these other devices. A more natural look to it. So by itself, I really like the Z Ultra. I prefer it to the other devices, but when you compare them side by side, it does look more yellow. All right, so let's go and take a look at the camera app really quickly. There's one feature obviously missing here, and that's the flash feature, which of course it does not have one. But the camera feature, again, is very standard Nexus stuff. So we have our options here, including panorama mode. We also have our uh, photosphere mode, uh, which allows you to take a photosphere. I'm not going to go into all of those. We have our still camera as well as our video camera. So we can go ahead and record a video, and we can stop it. So if you tap anywhere on the scene or anywhere on the screen, you can get to your settings. So we can go up to settings, we can switch the camera to the front camera, and we can change our white balance. And as you can see, it drills down into your menus. So you can change it to incandescent, fluorescent, auto, or daylight, or cloudy. And you can swipe down to get back to your lower level. Go back to settings, release it, takes you to your settings. So you can see you can change your video quality, your store location, as well as whether you want time lapse active or not. You can tap here to get to settings as well. You see the little circle icon. So when you're recording, you can see it does go away. You can switch to our front camera. We can tap to focus. As you can see, you get a little focus ring indicating that it's focusing for you. And you can also tap anywhere on the scene to bring up your settings so you can enable HDR. Uh, you can also go up here to settings and it drills down to more settings such as geolocation. You can turn on and off. And as you can see, your icons down here do adjust for that. So you can take a photo. You can pinch in and out to zoom. You get a little zoom indicator here. Of course, it's just digital zoom. And there you go. It's a pretty nice camera. Now in terms of benchmarking using Geekbench 3, we can see that the Nexus 5 and the Z Ultra score very similarly. So they both have the same Snapdragon 800 processor, same two gigs of RAM, so they score very close. 920 versus 912 and 2753 versus 2687, so slightly faster on the Nexus 5, which is clocked a little higher. So if we look down here, you can see uh, 2.27 gigahertz versus 2.15. Now, in terms of speed and performance, it's actually a pretty slick device here, but that's to be expected with most uh, stock devices. Usually, the bottleneck isn't the hardware, it's just the software, and Nexus devices are really highly optimized, so they work pretty well. You may have noticed some stuttering here and there throughout the filming of this video. I did notice it as well, mostly with the drop-down shade, but otherwise, it moves pretty quickly. So, for example, we can go to The Verge, we can quickly scroll through the entire website. It does a pretty good job. All right, so let's go ahead and do the size comparison. So here we have the iPhone 5S, which is absolutely dwarfed here, that four inch screen. Uh, we also have our Galaxy Note 3, which is quite a large device, but again, dwarfed by the Z Ultra. Then we have the Nexus 5, which we already looked at. Again, dwarfed, this has a 4.9 inch screen, I think. Uh, this has a 4.7 inch HTC One. And then we have the five inch GS4. And then we have the very large Galaxy Mega, which I thought was large until I saw the Z Ultra. This even dwarfs that. Now this is a uh, 6.3 inch screen. This is a 6.4 inch screen, but it looks considerably bigger than the uh, Galaxy Mega. And I think that's because we have larger bezels at either end on the top and bottom with the Z Ultra. Now, generally speaking, I actually find the ergonomics of the Galaxy Mega preferable to the Z Ultra. And that's because it has a smaller bezel down here than the Z Ultra. As you can see, it's a much thicker bezel, but it also has rounded corners. So it reduces the distance from your palm to the display. So as you can see, it rests comfortably in your palm as opposed to what the Z Ultra does because it has such a long bezel, it pretty much goes past your palm. So it's not a really comfortable grip in this case, and as you can see, once in your palm, it kind of digs into your palm, and it again it adds a little more distance between you and the display. So it's a small difference, but I do notice it when handling such a square device. But again, it's much thinner than something like the Mega. So if we look at it side on, you can see that although the Mega is still thin, it's definitely not as thin as the Z Ultra. Now, generally speaking, the Z Ultra is geared toward enthusiasts. We have the stock 
Android experience, which is geared toward Android fans, and we have this very large form factor, which most people will not prefer day to day just because it's more cumbersome to use, even if you have large hands. Uh, so for me, I really like this device, but it is a little cumbersome to use. It does ask to be dropped because it is so slick. It doesn't have a really ergonomic design with those sharp corners, uh, but it's got a nice, beautiful display. It kind of retains the tablet form factor while still remaining pocketable. So you can still slip this into your pocket, maybe not comfortably. It may take up too much space in your pocket, but it does get around pretty easily. This is better than something like the Nexus 7, which is still, of course, much bulkier. But if you like the stock experience, if you prefer the large form factor, there are really no other phones that can compete right now than the Z Ultra. So this is going to do for me in this video. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you again in the next one.